going to be tracing this road, but then we'll stop in Dublin. <laughs> because tomorrow's another day and all of that. <laughs> it's like a coronation, but a coronation is just the crown. You have to be made the leader, the holy leader, so that and doesn't axe you off the throne. So even with the coronation of King Charles III, he had an anointing. matter as well as a state affair. So, what are we up to today? Well, we're going to have a lovely drive. This is a very attractive part of the city, South County Dublin, and one of the most expensive. Now, you'll see a few nice houses. We're going to come into the city centre and we'll have a stop at St. Patrick's Cathedral to take some photos. Now there were only 29 people, we won't take too long to disembark and embark. And then we're going to go around a lot of different sites and then we will stop at Marion Square. So you'll be able to have a rest stop at Marion Square. You'll also be able to take a photograph of one of the Georgian doors. And if anybody chooses to go down to do a bit of shopping, I'll walk you down to that street. And I understand that some people would like to go to the Buck and Kells. I'll show you how to get into Trinity College. It looks difficult, but it's a case of crossing the road. And then you're there. But you only know that when you already know, if that makes sense. Yeah easy when you know how. So let's talk about religion and politics. No. <laughs> We're going to talk about monks. We are in monks town. Back in the olden days, you know the four, five, six, seven hundreds, people wanted to be hermits. Men wanted to be monks in a beautiful surrounding overlooking the sea so they could be close to nature. Women wanted to be nuns, generally fleeing marriage alliances. <laughs> One problem in Ireland is that we're very nosy. No sooner does one man go off to be a monk or one woman goes off to be a nun then all the friends follow to see what they're up to. <laughs> You just can't be a hermit very long. Hence we have Monk's Town. And the prefix of most of our areas, our towns and villages, have a religious origin. So kill sounds very violent, but it actually is a cell. We've got the beginning of Killian. Kill was a protection from the wind and the rain that the hermit would build. And after everybody came to visit, it would form a community. Then it would become a church, monastery, abbeys, and so forth. And as there was a sense of permanence, the nomadic Irish people would come to trade as there was a market for their produce. <coughs> eggs, butter, butter, butter. <laughs> we joined the, what was, was the EEC, or now the European Union, in 1972. We created our very own butter lake. Remember there was the wine lakes. We would really help to sack that up. But the butter lakes. <laughs> They were what we did a lot of. Just 
do, 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 do. So we have, we'll be having a street called Kildare Street. And then there is a shop called Kilkenny Design. And they come from old Irish names. And they were very powerful from the 1300s until the 1700s, so quite a long time. Kildare and Kilkenny were at war for 30 years. Right the way they show a good example, isn't it? So where we'll be stopping for a photograph at St. Patrick's Cathedral, there is a door that dates to 1492, which recognizes the war. <coughs> Kilkenny decided to hold himself up in St. Patrick's Cathedral and seek sanctuary. We've done it for a month, it's great. And Kilkenny was it. Kilkenny was inside, Kildare was outside. Kildare said Janie. He decided to cut a hole in a door. The main entrance door. And, and they shook hands and made up. So it's called the Door of Reconciliation. But it's also where we get the Irish wide term, chancing your arm. Have you ever heard chancing your arm? No. It means to take a risk. And somebody who's a bit of a risk taker is a chancer, pushing luck. difficult to have been a monk back then because you know you had to get your bird feather cut it to the right angle um, stretch the calf side have it all ready and then you're just about to dip your <coughs> quill into the ink and a viking burst through the door <laughs> and you blot the vellum Imagine the disappointment. So the Viking comes in with a big belt. There's an axe at one side <coughs> and a horn at the other. The horn was a drinking implement. You would usually uh, try the water, and if the water wasn't sweet, you go for ale, mead, you know, the honey-based drink, beer. And even if what well, the water was sweet, you could go for those as well. So, evidence whatsoever that the Vikings had worn to helmets. <laughs> it was revitalized in, the, uh, in Sweden in particular in the 1900s with the Nordic Revival. Sorry, late 1800s with the Nordic Revival. The monks. So the Vikings weren't specifically coming for manuscripts. They were raiding for gold. We had a lot of chalice made from gold or silver, and they were studded with beautiful jewels. If you would like to see any of those today, it's on Kildare Street in our National Museum. There are some really beautiful works of art. And why did the monks have them? Well, the monks were clever, you know. When the Irish were going into war, they said, just give us all your gold and we look after it. And the lords would say, or the kings would say, oh, well, what if we don't go back, come back? They'd say, well, you go straight to heaven. So whether you believed it or not, it seemed like a good exit strategy. Now we're going to 
going to come to a school that was established. So we had the Earls of Kildare, the Kings, and then later the Lord of Kildare. So the Lord and Lady Kildare in the 1700s got on very well. They had 19 children. Then he died, he might have been a bit tired, and she married the schoolmaster and went on to have a further three children. What a lady. So they decided to open a school, nearly fill it themselves. And it's coming up on the left, it's called Black Rock College. Here we are. School, particularly for rugby. Until 1968, we did not have free secondary education. So any of the boys who were going to school here, their parents were paying fees. And the boys who played rugby, they were going to do very well in life. They were going to network, start businesses, get good jobs. So these boys playing rugby became known as ruggers. When the European Union, ladies had to give up their jobs in the civil service. So nurses, secretaries, teachers, and outlets for ladies. So they thought, if I get with one of these ruggers, life will be a little bit easier for me. So they became known Rugger huggers. <laughs> so these are the brave rugger boys. Oh, they only need them. Guys, this one they're going to school. So these are a lot of the boys going to Black Rock College. So this is secondary school. Oh, it began at 12. <laughs> he looks like he's going to the school beside it, which is a primary school. And then across the way, there is a train station. So that a lot of people are coming in on the train. <coughs> on this road um, so that it has been uh, closed off quite a lot. After raiding for 45 years around Dublin Bay, they eventually went in and landed beside Trinity College in 840. We were obviously very scary. And they spent their first winter in Dublin. And they spent it behind Dublin Castle. The, the area was good. There was a pool of water where they could repair their log boats. And it was sheltered. And the water was black, coming down from the bogs with all the iron in it. So black in Irish is dove. And a pool is lin. So we got dove lin which became Dublin. So that's the 
1841, Dublin was first founded. It was piffed over a few times, rebuilt, and the last iteration of that was the 1970s. There's a few buildings, we'll see them remaining from older days, but we've had a lot of turbulent times. So now we're peace lovers. out of a Frankish king who holds himself up into a monastery on an island in France. And he said, <coughs> Norman or Northmen, go and take this part of my kingdom, Normandy, and keep the mouth of the river Seine safe. So the Northmen, from mostly Denmark, became the Norman learned how to work with swords, make fires hotter, build castles and stone structures and then they went to conquer England and then in the 11th they invited a couple of them over to help us with our ongoing feuds. To the right this is the Spanish embassy so first it was kings, then it was earls, then it was lords. I'll forget about all the other ones next. And back in the day when there were kings, one of the kings was a real bad guy. He'd stolen a woman from her home and sent her back because she didn't break all of her jewelry. Now, if you're being abducted, how are you going to remember all your jewellery? So anyway, her husband was um, a bit put out, so he decided to go and take the throne off this bad king. So Dermot was the bad king's name. Dermot went off to England in the 1160s and asked the king to give him a hand. The king was a bit busy and he said, come back later. So he said, later isn't any good, I have to do it now. So he trudged across England and over to the Welsh marches and found a hero. This hero was called Strongbow. You no know, more than just a cider, bow and arrow. Strongbow got to marry Dermot's beautiful daughter, Aoife. Just coming up on the left, this is the embassy of Britain. So if you want to see the, oh, the painting mm. of Strongbow and Aoife's wedding, it is in our National Gallery. And we're going to be stopping very close to that at the end of our whirl around so that you can experience the city. All our National Museum are free to enter. lovely arts and crafts building. It was an orphanage for um, young ladies and they got to learn crafts and skills so that they could su survive and prosper in life. is the RDS, the Royal Dublin Society. This was established to promote husbandry, looking after animals, 
particularly cattle and sheep. We had dabbled in potatoes for a while, but that didn't work out very well. So we went back to what we were good at. These days, of our tiny little Republic of Ireland, we can feed 50 million people. And our population is only 5.4. It's over a river. It's vast. Brace yourselves now because it's so exciting. It's called the Dodder. And apart from the River Liffey, the main river in Dublin, it's the only river that doesn't go underground. <coughs> well, it's breathtaking, isn't it? <laughs> Behind the trees is the Embassy of the United States. And you'll see a lot of students queuing up for their student work visa. We have a program called the J1 Visa Program, where Irish students can work in the United States for the summer. I went to San Francisco. It's great fun. was almost as cold as Dublin. <laughs> Only in the summer, that's when I went. <laughs> when you're 21, you don't look into the details very well. <laughs> at these traffic lights. If you look down to the right, there is a large stadium. It's for football, as in soccer, and rugby. Kind of swirly, yes. And when we play football, there are two teams playing, Northern Ireland and the Republic of Ireland. And we're not very good at all. When we play rugby, all of Ireland plays together and we're not too...